have you asked yourself why you are seeking that sin? Why it is that that sin sings to you? So, what's your plan, see? This is Wretched Radio. I do not know what Edward G. Robinson, yeah, that was that impersonation. I don't know what he has to do with your sin temptation plan and your repentance strategy, but you should develop one. You better have one in place, an offensive strategy growing in holiness, intentionally exerting some energy and discipline to be engaged in the disciplines. But then you also need to have a defensive strategy so that when the temptation comes, you're on it. So when our kids were very young and we were trying to just help them to deal with their own temptation, we came up with this. Stop, get away, pray, obey. You say, man, that's really simple. That's not very profound. Exactly. (laughs) Because you're not trying to be profound in the moment of temptation. You're trying to help put a simple outline into the mind of the person that as soon as they're tempted, they know what to do. This is what we taught our kids. You stop, right? You have that moment you realize, hey, what I'm doing is not honoring to God. You get away. The Joseph method, right? You remove yourself in so far as you can from the place of temptation. Then you apply Hebrews chapter four. You turn to Christ in prayer. What's obey? Obey is doing the things that we just learned, right? Make no provision for the flesh. I'm, I'm going to stop and I'm not going to make any more plan. It's turning to grace and mercy to help. It's stop and saying, wait a minute. What was I wanting in this moment, right? That's what James said, right? That's a big question. If you've never been able to have a great deal of victories, increasing success in resisting temptation, have you asked yourself why you are seeking that sin? Why it is that that sin sings to you? What are you missing? What are you lacking? What are you desiring? How is it making you feel below the surface? What, 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 what itch is it scratching? Figure that out. In fact, that can actually help you when temptation, it, when it does come sneaking around, you start asking yourself the question, why am I tempted by, it? oh yeah, it's because I'm not happy in my marriage. Okay, then acknowledge that, but then get to your offensive strategy and fix that. If you are, for instance, looking at pornography and you haven't examined why it is that you do that, you're missing the opportunity to get better somewhere. It could be that because your marriage is struggling and you just are frustrated, so you use the outlet of pornography. Maybe it's something different for you. Let's stick with pornography what is it that you are looking to feel beyond just the physical sensation? What is it? You you want to be considered like that image in the computer screen? Is it because you think you deserve it today? Is it because you are trying to get at somebody? Is it because you're angry? Why do you look at porn? This is what, what I do with somebody struggling with pornography. Flee to a safe place pray for help, call your accountability partner, and review counseling notes. And that assumes that that what I've done, I have prepared them, and this is typically what I'll do, is when we go over texts like James 1 or or Romans 13, I'll have them make a little card and keep it in their Bible of those promises. Oh, that's so helpful. So simple, isn't it? You're tempted. Where's your Bible verses that you've memorized, that you've written on a card? Get them into your brain so that you find your satisfaction and fulfillment in Jesus Christ and not in pixels, not in a bottle, not in an image, not in a pair of shoes. What is your strategy? Now, the question that Dr. Keith Palmer raises and then goes about the business of answering for us is how do we put all of this together to develop a strategy for sin, specifically in this instance, Mike and Molly are drug-addicted church visitors. Uh, I'm going to focus on pornography because I think this is probably one of the things that we are most likely to see in our counseling ministries, our discipling ministries to one another. And uh, so let's take what we've learned about repentance, and this is step-by-step 
what I take my counselees through in terms of actually practicing repentance, okay? Um, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to lead them to confess the sin to God and to seek his forgiveness. Uh, we saw that in Psalm 51, uh, also Psalm 32, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a repentance strategy, preparing them to repent even before they've committed the sin. And the same thing is true for us. And might I just suggest that if you've been doing this, you've been repenting, but you're not having increasing victory, I wonder if it's because you're missing this particular component. And finally, and this is the one that gets looked over so often, is a commitment. A commitment. Repentance is not complete until there is an awareness of what needs to change, and there is a commitment by God's grace to enact those changes. Have you been doing that? Maybe your repentance when you sin, it includes, Lord, I'm sorry, thank you for your mercy, help me not to do it anymore. Cool, but there's another component. And Lord, could you say this? I'm going to commit to you to not sin anymore. <laughs> Don't make a rash oath, but make a commitment that by his power, by his grace, you're, you're done. You're committed to not doing this sin anymore. Have you ever prayed that regarding your besetting sin? I wonder if that is why it continues to linger. More steps in developing a strategy in dealing with sin. And nobody said this was easy. We also want to take steps of radical amputation to avoid temptation in the future. And, and you see this over and over again. I, I, think, I think the average Christian who struggles with life-dominating sin thinks this, I'm going to confess it to God, and that alone will make it different next time. Well, that's not what Scripture says. Confessing to God is a good part, a needed part of that. But Matthew chapter 5 says, what do you do? If your right hand causes you to sin, no problem, it'll work out better next time, right? <laughs> it says you, you cut that off, or you pluck out your eye, the, what we call radical amputation in the biblical counseling world, meaning you are looking for the things that are tripping you up, and you are getting rid of those things. Question, how are you getting your fix? If it's porn, how do you view it? If it's drugs, where do you get it? If it's the bottle, where do you buy it? Cut it off. Don't go to the liquor store. Don't go to the bar. I'll just have a Diet Coke. That's foolishness. That's the opposite of the Joseph strategy. Run for your life. Get out of the... Don't even go in there. If you find yourself suddenly surrounded by temptation, that's one thing. But it's another thing to go looking for it. Don't. Cut it off. Here's a test for you. I'm going to say something pretty radical. And consider how you respond. If you're serious about not viewing pornography, get rid of your cell phone. Oh, come on! That I need this! I, I gotta do business with this! And what does it profit a man if he gains the world and loses his soul? Cut it off! If your heart is not willing to do it, I can predict with a pretty fair degree of certainty you're gonna be failing again and again and again because you're not really in the game. You don't understand yet the consequences of what you are doing. You do not understand the offensive nature of your behavior to the God who died to save you. This is a spiritual battle. That is what this is what Ephesians 6 is about. The spiritual battles that are taking place, you and I don't get involved in talking to demons, rebuking spirits. No, we resist temptation. We submit to God. We grow in holiness. We have an offensive plan, and we have a defensive strategy. And we also have a repentance strategy, which means when we fall, and it can happen, we don't forget that we have an advocate, Jesus the righteous. We also want to help them, help them to confess the sin and seek forgiveness from those whom you sinned against. Remember, confession is always vertical and sometimes horizontal, right? 
It's always vertical because all sin is always against God. It's sometimes horizontal if that sin has been also directed towards someone else whom we have hurt or sinned against. Luke 17, 3, if your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. So that may be going to a spouse. That may be going to a child, an adult child, um, someone whom our sin has been against in our addiction. We also want to confess the sin to another brother in Christ. You saw that in the the temptation plan that we put together. Uh, James uh, uh, 5 verse 16 says we need to confess our sins to one another. Um, It is so important that we don't try to battle the sins of addiction alone. Pastor, might I encourage you to consider adding that Sunday night service and that Wednesday night meeting and every night in between We've got a lot of time to watch Netflix, but what we need is to be in a context, an environment where we are constantly breathing Bible. Question, do you have an offensive, defensive strategy, and do you have a repentance plan, and does it involve your local church? This is Wretched Radio. Good evening, my fellow totally depraved Americans. (laughs) 